Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence. The bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Welcome. I am the Reverend Anthony Johnson, and I welcome you to this virtual worship service of the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg. Because we cannot meet in the church building, we continue in an online presence some old programs and develop new ones to strengthen and serve the members and friends of the church during this time of physical distancing. Every Sunday, there's a live virtual coffee hour following the service from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Please read the news you can use and other emails you receive from the church, and please check the website regularly for updates. Please note the times when the minister is available via Zoom for you to check in and talk. And please send your joy or sorrow via the link in the email you received and indicate whether you give permission for it to be read in the next week's service. If you are a visitor or newcomer, I invite you to explore the website uchbg.org to learn more about the church and its many activities. To all watching or listening, I say, whoever you are, wherever you live, whomever you love, whatever you do for a living, you are welcome at the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg. I invite those of you at home to light a chalice, a candle, or whatever you choose to serve as your chalice at home. We light the chalice as a light to guide our going and coming, a symbol of warmth to welcome, a flame to light up the world beyond that we already know, and a heart around which we gather as a community. Please join in the reading of the unison affirmation. Love is the spirit of this congregation. And service is our gift. This is our great covenant. To dwell together in peace to speak our truths in love, and to help one another. Please join in singing our opening hymn for flowers that bloom about our feet. Stein, the UCH RE Committee Chair and current RE Coordinator. I am excited to be joined today for the Time for All Ages by our two RE lay liturgists, Taryn and Brianna, and they're going to help me today share the story of the first flower festival. 
One day in 1920, 100 years ago, the children appeared at a Unitarian church to attend Sunday school. Their names were Gabriella, Bratislav, and Trepek. They had a younger brother, Loper, but he was still a baby, so he was not with them. Their parents were Norbert and Maya Chapek. Norbert had been a Baptist minister in what was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and which then became Czechoslovakia. He had come to the United States in 1915 to serve as minister of a Baptist church in Newark, New Jersey, where he served as a leader in the Slavic community. He had started thinking about switching from Baptist to Unitarian in 1910, before he came to the United States. He and Tomas Mazriak, who had become the first president of the United Czech Czechoslovakia in 1918, tried to interest the American Unitarian Association in a mission to preach Unitarianism in their homeland, but the Americans were not interested. Sadly, Gabriela Radoslav and Zora's birth mother, Mary, had died, but a year later, their father had married Maria Oktovec, who was called Maya, and she became the mother as well as the, being the birth mother of the new baby, Luber. Maya Chapek had been a librarian in New York City, but she shared her husband's dream of someday returning to the country where they were both born, where they had both been born. She had been, she had come here as a little girl, he as a middle-aged man, with a family of nine children, some of whom were now adults. Because he was thinking less and less like about this, Norbert stopped working as a minister in 1918 and worked entirely as an editor and psychologist. He and Maya decided that 1920, that the time was right to return to Czechoslovakia and help a new society of Great War was over, what was then called the Great War. We now call the First War they sold their house in New Jersey, but were delayed, delayed leaving. So they rented an apartment on Main Street in East Orange and registered Gabriella, Bratislav, and Zora in the public schools. Luber, the baby, was still too young for school. By now, Norbert and Maya no longer considered themselves Baptists, but they were still religious people. They wanted a Sunday school for their, for their children. So the mother and father suggested that the school-aged children go to, go to church with their friends from public school. But Norbert quizzed them when they got home, and he did not like what he heard. Too orthodox, not at all liberal. And eventually, the children turned the corner from Main Street onto Cleveland Street and arrived at the Unitarian Church in Orange. Gabriella, Radoslav, and Zor liked the Sunday school. When their mother and father asked what what, what, what it was like being taught in Sunday school, their parents liked what they heard. So the parents went to the Sunday service and they liked it too. They got to know the minister, the Reverend Dr. Walter Reed Hunter. Maya, Maya Chapek signed the church's membership book on January 1st, 1921. Reverend Hunt introduced Reverend Chapek to the president of the American <laughs> Unitarian Association. When they went home from the United States to Czechoslovakia later that year, they had the support of American Unitarians in spreading Unitarianism to Czechoslovakia, where Gabriela, Radoslav, Zora, and Luber will go to Sunday school in a church started by their parents in Prague. That church would soon become the largest Unitarian church in the world. It was in Prague in 1923 that the first flower festival was celebrated.
Today in this congregation, someone is hurting or in sorrow. Today in this congregation, someone is anxious because of events in the world. Today in this congregation, someone is lonely. Today in this congregation, someone is filled with joy and wants to celebrate. For all the fear and sorrow in the world today, there are still moments of joy. I have one sorrow that I've been asked to share with you today from Corin Bogdan. He writes, my mother-in-law passed away on Mother's Day. I offer my condolences to Jim and Corin and their families on the loss of Corin's mother. For this spoken sorrow and for joys and sorrows unspoken, we offer this prayer. We have heard the words of the people. The people have placed their trust, their joy and sorrow before this community and before the holy. The words they have shared are words of love and trust. Love for those whose name was spoken and love for those who hear. Trust in the acceptance of this community and trust in the continuity of life. Where there is death, life goes on. Where there is birth, life goes on. Where there is joy, life goes on. Where there is sorrow, life goes on. May we always live in trust and in love that the joy might be shared that all joy might be shared and that all sorrow might be comforted. This is our prayer. Blessed be. Amen. In 1921, when the Chopics went home to Czechoslovakia from the United States, they had the support of the American Unitarian Association. The president of the association, the Reverend Dr. Samuel Atkins Elliott, had raised sufficient funds to guarantee that the Chopics would be able to spend at least the next year organizing Unitarian churches in Czechoslovakia. Once in Prague, Norbert and Maya Chopek organized meetings, recruited leaders, and held services. For a decade, they met in rented space, sometimes one place on Sunday for the service, another on Tuesday for repeat of the sermon as a lecture, followed by discussion, and still another the next Sunday. And Norbert Chopek was invited to lecture elsewhere as well. 
all this contributed to the growth of what they had first called the Free Religious Fellowship. While the Free Religious Fellowship would not have its own building until the 1930s, it had a message and it quickly grew in numbers. It had the message that people who no longer believed in the teachings of the Catholic or the Baptist or other religions could still have a religious life. It had the message that life can be good and fulfilling, that each individual carried within himself or herself great potential for personal fulfillment, and that each person was capable of moral goodness. The message was one that Chopik meant for both the head and for the heart. It embodied both the rational and the spiritual. Because Chopek rejected rituals and symbols that carried the weight of beliefs he had rejected, some people seemed to think that the rational was much more evident than the spiritual, and too much so. British and American visitors were critical. But Chopek knew that religion was for the heart as well as for the head and set out to create rituals that spoke to both mind and heart. Norbert Chopek described the process in his report to Dr. Elliot, dated July 20th, 1923. These are his words. We are trying to find new expressions of our religious life very slowly and carefully. Whereas the dedication of a child, weddings and burials were kept rather close to the general Unitarian custom, we have made a new experiment in symbolizing our liberty and brotherhood in a service that was so powerful and impressive that I have never experienced anything like it. The mostly dry and rationalistic members were moved and many an eye brightened through tears. On that very Sunday, it was the last before the holidays, everybody was supposed to bring a flower. In the middle of the big hall was a suitable table with a big vase where everyone put his flower. The sight of so many beautiful flowers was wonderful and more and more of them were coming, solemnly yet joyfully with full understanding of the meaning. We had a common song. In my sermon, I put emphasis upon the individual character of each member flower, on our liberty as a foundation of our fellowship. And when they go home, that each is to take one flower just as it comes without making any distinction where it came from and who it represents, to confess that we accept one each other as brothers and sisters without regard to class, race, or other distinction, acknowledging that everybody is our friend who is human and wants to be good. After all these experiences, nobody dares to say anymore that we are so rationalistic as to have nothing for the heart. When the Chopics went home from the United States to Prague, they carried with them the Unitarian religion that had given them meaning, strength, stimulation, inspiration, and a place for their children to develop as religious and ethical persons. In Prague, the Chopics were gathering together people who, like themselves, no longer believed the faiths of their upbringing. There were people with a variety of life experiences. There were people who held varied beliefs. The ministers and members of the new fellowship did not believe that rituals or sacraments could convey grace or ensure salvation, but they recognized that rituals are part of life. Even the most intellectual religions and individuals have rituals. Rituals bind people together in community. They express values and beliefs that would otherwise take hundreds, perhaps thousands of words to convey. Chopek adopted rituals of British and American Unitarianism to the Czech situation. 
but he also saw the need for new rituals. And the most original enduring of these was the flower festival, often called the flower communion. Following the New England Unitarian tradition, services were suspended during the summer. The flower festival was held at the last formal service in June. And it was a ritual that emphasized both individual freedom by which the members joined themselves as a free religious fellowship and the inclusiveness of the fellowship itself. Why a flower? Why not something else? Years later in 1961, the Reverend Maya Chopek who had been ordained as a minister in Prague, wrote the answer in these simple words. Because in the name of a flower or flowers, no wars were waged as was the case with the cross or the chalice. Norbert and Maya Chopek abhorred war, but they were not pacifists. Living in the United States during the First World War, Norbert had rallied support for American involvement in that war. He had been president of the Newark branch of the Red Cross. In Czechoslovakia, as the Second World War loomed, following the Munich Pact in 1938, Maya prepared to go to the United States to rally support and to protect Czechoslovakia from Nazi occupation, and also to raise funds for a joint effort among Unitarians and the Quakers for refugee relief. She left Prague in February 1939, just weeks ahead of the Nazi occupation. She was not to return until after the war's end, and she was also never to see her husband again. On March 28, 1941, Zora Chopek, who at age seven attended the Unitarian Sunday School in Orange, New Jersey, was an adult working for an insurance company. She and her father were arrested by the Gestapo. And what was their crime? Listening to foreign news broadcasts on a shortwave radio. They were also charged with treason. Both were cleared of the charge of treason, but sentenced to short terms for the crime of listening to foreign news broadcasts. However, Zora was released and her father was not. He was sent to the concentration camp at Dachau, where he was executed on October 12, 1942. Norbert Chopek was a martyr for his nation's freedom and a martyr for the spiritual development of the individual, whatever path each might choose. But just as important, he lived a life's journey in which he was unafraid of taking chances and changing course when he concluded that his previous course was incorrect. And he was utterly committed to what he called in English brotherhood, what we today might call fellowship or solidarity. Although the Chopeks called their new ritual a festival, Unitarian Universalists around the world have come to call it the flower communion. But Chopek had avoided the word communion because it, like the chalice, referred to the Christian sacrament of the Eucharist, the symbolic reenactment of the sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross, reenacted by means of consecration of bread and wine, representing his body and blood. Now, American Unitarianism practiced communion and its delegates to Prague criticized the secular nature of the Prague Church's practice. Hence, Chopik's defensiveness in insisting that his practice did offer something for the heart. The members of the Free Religious Fellowship were actively rejecting Christianity and their minister felt the need to avoid any Christian symbols. But he knew that any religion needs symbols and needs rituals particularly rituals that express beliefs and move a person emotionally. Now the word communion has another meaning other than as a ritual or sacrament. It can also mean a body of persons sharing a belief or practice. 
a ritual such as the flower communion, celebrated the Unitarian communion, the gathering in Prague, a communion of persons living in, and here I quote Chopic, common cause as one spiritual community, as brethren. Now, communion is a strong word for Unitarian Universalists, especially those who are rejecting a previous faith. But I say, let's use it. A church is more than a random collective of individuals. It is a body of a people of faith. It is a communion of those who may not agree on everything, but who agree on the most important things. When we truly accept one another as brothers and sisters without regard to race, class, or other distinction, we have a powerful faith. And remember the distinction between belief and faith. Belief means agreement with certain ideas. Faith means actually living what you believe. Norbert and Maya Chapek lived their faith. In Norbert's case, case, he lived it even unto death. So call this ritual a festival, call it a communion. The message matters more than the name. And that message is one of radical acceptance of others, and it is a demanding message. It is a, mad, a message of radical communion, radical fellowship, radical solidarity. And so I say, let this communion, this church, say, Amen. Even as you are separated and sitting in your own homes today, the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg is still a freely gathered church of free people. The church is created, sustained, and supported by you. The ministry continues even when the building is closed. During the month of June, we share our offering with the Oliver Legrone Scholarship Fund. Oliver Legrone was a poet, sculptor, and educator. The fund supports four-year scholarships of high school graduates from the city of Harrisburg so that they may continue their education at the post-secondary level. On the page below the screen, you can find directions for making a contribution on the line during the service or after. Your financial support and commitment matter. Please be generous. The Flower Festival is a ritual of sharing and of acceptance. When we celebrate the festival in person, each individual brings a flower, adds it to a collection of vases on a table in front of the pulpit, and before leaving, receives a different flower. Today you will see pictures of fellow church members and flowers, and if you are gathered with family at home, you can exchange flowers with each other.
Everyone, please hold up your flower and join in reading together the flower communion of prayer, which will appear on your screen. In, in the, the name, name of Providence, which, which implants in, in the seed the future of the flowers, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of the highest, in whom we move, and who makes the father and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders, who sacrifice their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolve, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen and blessed be. And now in continuing the Flower Festival, this Unitarian Universalist Communion, let us sing together De Colores. Please join us in singing our closing hymn. De Colores.
Look at the flower on the screen or a flower you have at home. And here are these words of benediction adapted from the words of Norbert and Maya Chopik. You are an individual as unique as this flower. Each person is just as unique. Because of the variety among us, we accept each other as brothers and sisters without regard to race, class, or other distinction. We acknowledge as friend each person who is human and wants to do good. We walk together without reservation with anyone, regardless of social status, or former religious affiliation. As long as each is ready and willing to search for the truth and serve humanity. Amen. And now let us go forth to the days ahead and stay safe and enjoy the gift of this day that is yours to live. Blessed be. Amen.